Doctors who have joined the nationwide strike by the Ghana Medical Association face possible sanctions, including suspension of their salaries and dismissal. That's the position of a labor expert, Ben Arthur, who says the ongoing strike violates portions of the labor law. But why are doctors defaulting the laws regulating their profession? Have they explored all avenues available to them? What are the implications of their strike on health delivery across the country? We'll be seeking answers from a labor consultant and health experts on today's big story. With me, Aishi Bryan. The doctors withdrew OPD services today as part of a process to resign en masse in three weeks. The doctors are demanding conditions of service agreement with government. Uh, we've been in the meeting since 4 p.m. Um, we have gone through our proposal on some of the issues. They have made certain counter proposals. Uh, there were a lot of the issues that have been flagged. It means that we could, they couldn't even give us uh, exactly what they are thinking they needed to do further consultations and so we have said that is fine with us but um, what we are saying is that um, we did have a deadline in place i'm sure all of you remember that way back on the night of november 2014 we issued a statement indicating that if by the end of june 2015 we don't have conditional service signed and negotiated for we are going to take certain decisions that would shake the entire system we met again we had an extraordinary meeting general meeting on the 28th of june okay. at that point negotiations have started so we reviewed ourselves and then we actually shifted the deadline to the 29th of july 2015 right. and that so was supposed to be and that was supposed to be at 6 p.m and as we speak, the condition of service has not been signed. It's not been fully negotiated for and signed. As we speak, technically, the GMA is on strike. What it means is that the roadmap that was designed by the General Assembly is in force. So from tomorrow, what is going to happen is that there will not be OPD services until next week. So from tomorrow, there will be... Precisely, there will not be OPD services. Outpatient department services is completely stopped okay. in all hospitals. Then, next week, we will stop emergencies. The following week, we will clear the hospitals, and then we can all go home and sleep and declare ourselves unemployed. Okay. So that is exactly what we are going to do. And so that is what is happening. Okay. Let, let me say that there are a lot of areas that I cannot stand here and tell you that we agreed on A, B, C, D. But we had a simple request that by this day, 6 p.m., we should have a negotiated and signed conditions of service. We don't have that. There is no document. The minister cannot show you any document. That is our conditions of service. So as we speak, doctors in the public sector do not have conditions of service. We are still at ground zero as we started. And so that process that was set up by the General Assembly has to kick, his, kick into motion. And that is exactly what is happening. So we are stopping OPD services or outpatient department services from tomorrow. And that will last us for a week. If by the end of that week nothing has happened, we will move into the second gear, which is including emergencies. And then the following week, we make sure that every single patient under our care is discharged, and then we will consider ourselves unemployed. Thousands of patients were left stranded across the country today when some doctors in public hospitals joined the strike. Some people are telling me that there's a strike, but I have no idea. Okay. So I'm just waiting. No waiting. Are you hopeful that you get medical attention today? I'm not sure. You're not sure? No. What do you make of the doctor's strike? Well, the line of communication have been open while they still continue to work. Because medical field, you can never, ever abandon. Where I come from, there has never been a strike in a hospital. All grievances are solved on the table, not in the hospital rooms. Going on strike is wrong. But their grievances are to be late. How does this make you feel that you're here waiting hours and not getting medical, uh, medical attention for your sister? Yeah, actually, it makes me feel very nervous because we came here as early as 4 o'clock. 
and we have been waiting. We were here last two weeks, and they gave us today that we should be here. So we came very early so that we will leave quite early to attend to other businesses. Mm. But quite unfortunately, we came here, we have made all the payments. Since we are not having national health, they made us make all the payments, and we are here waiting. We have heard the rumors, but none of the nurses has come out to tell us that doctors are on strike. So we are still waiting till we get maybe authentic information that doctors are from the hospital. Yeah, from the hospital. Now, now, what do you make of the decision by the doctors to withdraw their services because of their um, f government's failure to give them their conditions of service? Actually, it's quite unfortunate. But <laughs> since they are in the soup and they know how hot it is, I can't speak for them. So we just pray that government will meet their needs. From what I'm hearing, if they haven't been paid for months, then uh, they have the right to go on strike. Although I'm not feeling well, uh, they also have mouths to feed. And if you, can't, you don't pay somebody for nine months, I don't think the person should continue working. Yeah. So you are supporting them even though you're not well? Yes, yes. So what options would you consider now, considering that you're not feeling well, you've been taken care of, but you still have some attention to go through? Um, if I have the finan finance, finances, then I have to see a private doctor. But do you? I do. For now, I do. What about those who don't? That is where the problem lies. Let's now get more on this from another labor expert, Austin Game, who is in the studio now. Good evening. Uh, many thanks for joining us on You're today's welcome. Big Story. Thank you. Um, are you in support or do you agree that uh, the doctor's position may be a breach of Section 169 of the labor law and could face sanctions? Well, they are definitely in breach. Uh, both sides, the employer and uh, the union, uh, they both should not even have started the negotiation in the first place. So both, both sides have breached the labor law. And, uh, and so, yes, they have breached the labor law. And uh, there is really, uh, the second thing to be done is for the employer to take steps and ensure that they protect the interests of the people the doctors are supposed to serve. Uh, we have an institution, the National Labor Commission is there. Uh, Either party can go and report this matter to the Labor Commission. So I expect the employer to do so. I expect the union also to do so. If they feel strong that they have a case that they want it to be addressed, then there is a place you can go and have it addressed. And in all of these, they haven't uh, explored the avenue of the Labor Commission because I know Article uh, Section 162 of the Labor Law says that after three days, if issues of this nature are not resolved, we can seek refuge at the Labor Commission. They, they, it's clear they did not explore that mm. avenue. Yeah, it's because both, uh, both parties did not explore it. One party can explore it, both parties can explore it. In this case, to be honest with you, in the first place, they should not have started the negotiation at all. Right. Because if the rules they claim they have is anything to go by, mm. you cannot be threatening someone, holding a gun on him right. or a knife on him, exactly. and you ask that you should come and commence negotiation. It's inappropriate. Right. It's, it's not done in any civilized society. Okay. So government faulted by even by, starting by even the negotiation. By even commencing the negotiation in the first place. And the union also is guilty for, you know, threatening the employer right. and pressurizing the employer because of the sensitivity of the job they do exactly. and, and compel them to come to the negotiation table and then using adversarial approach mm. in the negotiation. Right. You know. And so let, let, let's look at sanctions. Uh, mm. Once it's illegal, it mm. means that the employer can sanction. Um, and so what are the sanctions that the labor law, you know, offer or provide? Well, I'm not doing mediation here, so I'm going to be very open in talking about this issue the way it should be talked about. Okay. If it's mediation, it's a different ballgame altogether. Right. Now, the, in the first place, the employer should immediately report this matter to the appropriate quarters. Okay. And the right place to go is the National Labor Commission. Right. And the Labor Commission will give an order for them to stop the strike immediately okay. and compel both sides if they think that they cannot resolve the matter through the civilized way of negotiating the condition of service, then compulsory arbitration will be triggered. Okay. And therefore, the commission in all, all the commission members may sit, or maybe about three of them may sit, and ensure that they arbitrate in this matter. Okay. And the matter will be resolved once and for oh. all. 
But during the, the time of the arbitration, according to Section 1612, they cannot be on strike for this to continue. Uh, there are those who think that because junior doctors uh, have issues have been addressed partly, that's why the senior doctors are biting so hard. Uh, you think there's a link between these two? No, it's a million miles apart. Okay. Million, million miles apart. The junior doctors have worked and they have not been paid, paid for, for 11 salary. months. They have made a case. It was being addressed not the way they wish it should be addressed. Mm. Though they were also, they also may be wrong in taking the step they took. They should have gone to the Labor Commission or the same. Okay. But I think that in fairness to them, they have been paid and that ends it. But when it comes to this case of uh, uh, GMA, or Ghana Medical Association, metamorphosed into a union and negotiating their condition of service, it's a complete different ball game. So it has nothing to do with the junior doctors whatsoever. Well, let's get onto the phone lines because Sidu Aho is on the line. He is with a health NGO. Good evening, uh, Sidu Aho. Many thanks for your time. Hello, Mr. Aho. You are on today's big story. I believe he cannot hear me enough, but let's look at the strike. Uh, the GMA or the doctors have the right to demand for condition of service and of course if what they're saying is something to go by they do not have condition of service at all and so why would this be in breach of law or what if if essential services are not supposed to go on strike then what does the law provide for them in, in case they want to also pursue this kind of course mm. well from if they claim they don't have condition a written signed condition of service then from independence, they never had a written condition of service Okay. to date. Now they want to make effort to, to have a condition. There's nothing wrong, and I support them 100% plus to enable them to have a written condition of service. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay. It's an approach that is completely out of gear. Okay. If they have submitted a proposal and the employer also agreed to it and they are sitting to negotiate, then there is a process they have to go through. And that process will mean that they will raise the issues one after the other. It is not compulsory that the employer should agree to what they have brought. Okay. And it is not compulsory that whatever they brought should be imposed. Okay. So both sides will have to discuss the issues. If they are unable to reach agreement on all or any of the issues, they have to package it, send it to the National Labor Commission. Mm. Because they are essential service, as in, as in the LI-1833, they are dedicated essential service, Within three days on rep reporting this matter to the National Labor Commission, they will constitute themselves either to a full panel, as it were, all of them, or each one representing the bodies that send them there. Right. And they will go through that process and resolve the matter. In fact, the good news is that their matter can be resolved within three days. And so there is an end to their problem. So going to the press, making a, request, you know, a demand that if you don't complete this for me, I will take a strike action. It's completely wrong. And whosoever is advising them is doing this service a big disservice. Well, but if this can be resolved in three days, yeah. uh, why has it gone this far? Because I know this issue has been on the table for quite too long. I certainly don't want to blame one side. I blame both sides. Because either side can report this matter to the National Labor Commission. Right. I am but wondering they whether they so. have done that properly. Mm. And if they have exhausted the avenues open to them and they are unable to resolve the matter. Okay. Fortunately, we have a very strong Labor Commission. They are doing their best. Okay. They should go and appear before them. They will assist them to resolve the matter. But the, the manner, yeah, my friends, the way they are going about it is completely, they are leading the whole nation into a slaughterhouse. Right. Those people who are sitting there and are unwell, mm. and, and they also join the, the chorus in talking about the, the thing, the way they are talking about it, we should be very, very careful. Whosoever is in this country, from the president to the laborer in this country, mm. whoever will say something in, 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 in the opposite sense okay. as to how this matter should be resolved, you are leading all of us into a slaughterhouse. Right. That is what Which shouldn't it's. be the case. And, and of course, talking about the slaughterhouse in some parts of Accra, my colleague Hano Dami went to the La Polyclinic and also went to the police hospital. And the situation is not different there. Let's take a look. 
The strike has just begun here at the La Hospital. The management is trying all their best to ensure that there's no lapse in taking care of patients. I have seen a medical officer on duty taking care of some patients and two house officers I'm also told are on duty also assisting. The nurse in charge tells me that as and when the situation gets beyond um, what the house officers can do, other people, other doctors will be brought in to take care of them. When I entered, I saw the nurse in charge informing the client that doctors are on strike so they do not have to complain if they delay in the queue. Let's find out from the patients how they feel about this. And I'm here with Auntie Felicia, who has been here since 7 o'clock. Auntie Felicia, welcome to join us. Thank you. I've been sitting here for more than three hours now. I came here at 7.45 a.m. and it's past 10 a.m. now. I want the government to do what the doctors want so we don't waste time because of the strike. I came here before getting to know of the strike. So for now, I only have to wait to be attended to. If I had known of the strike, I wouldn't have come here. I would have gone to the police hospital instead. I am pleading with the government to pay the doctors so they can return to their works. The expectation is that the police hospital will be choked with a lot of patients as a result of the strike by doctors in other hospitals. But as you can see behind me, that is not the case. Perhaps from tomorrow, when the message has gone down well with the patients and doctors, we'll begin to see the trickling effects of their strike here at the police hospital. So that was Hanodame at the La General Hospital. But there are those who feel that the doctors are asking for too much. You feel the same? No, I don't want to think like that. They have the right to submit their pro It's a proposal. Whatever they have asked, I don't even know about it, but they have the right to ask whatsoever. They can even ask them for the whole Ghana. <laughs> doesn't matter. But it's a proposal. That is impossible. So both sides should go and sit down and negotiate. Right. In, in, in the appropriate manner in which the labor law prescribes it. Now, my worry is that, like I said, those poor aunties of ours who are sitting there now, hmm. needing medical services, they don't know the, the rules of the game. So they are saying the government should pay them. The government don't owe them anything. Okay. They are negotiating a condition of service. It is not their mentally paid that has not been paid. Right. And so negotiating condition of service, you don't have to attach this kind of stringent measures to it. Sorry. The law don't permit that. And yeah. why should they say that they want to uh, start punishing us slowly and punish us next week heavily and then the ultimate? I think if they seriously speaking, assuming the doctors really meant to Sorry. do what they want to do, right. I think they should resign Today. and block tomorrow morning. <laughs> They should all resign. Then we know that we don't have doctors. Right. Then our aunties who went to the hospital will not face that kind of situation they face because exactly. they, are, they, are, they are killing us before we even enter the hospital. Right. So they should resign tomorrow morning. Okay. All the same, I urge both sides to quickly march to the Labor Commission and, and the Labor Commission see. will help them to solve the problem. Right. So what, what kind of sanctions can the employer place on the employee? I know there's the... the um, the law provides that the employer can go to court and, and, and you know, annul the strike. But can the employer also decide that I'm holding on to your salary or even sack them? It's their choice. Indeed, if they can calculate how much they suffered today, they have to make it and submit it to the Labor Commission. Look, the Labor Commission is as powerful as the High Court. Mm. Albeit, it's, it's, it's a creature of, 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 of law. Right. But at the same time, they are as powerful in their action as the court. Mm. And so this is a matter of essential service, and they must trigger a compulsory arbitration if the parties go and report it. They can also summon them anyway, right. which I'm expecting them to do. Mm. But at the same time, it's the best thing 
to save their own face, both employer and the union, to save their face, one party or both parties should go to the Labour Commission tomorrow morning. Okay. And indeed, if they, are, they feel strong about it, mm. that they want to uh, uh, really stop the work because we are not giving. Uh, I use the word we because we are contributors to taxes that pay them. Exactly. We are their customers. They right. should know right. that they can't be punishing the customer who pay their monthly pay. Mm. So they should resign. Then we know we don't have doctors. At all. We will manage it. We will manage it. We will go and buy something and start <laughs> doing something until they change their mind. But I have a lot of respect for them. Mm. They should please understand that they cannot continue in this kind of approach. Right. They should go to the Labor Commission. They can assist them to resolve their matter since they don't want to use any other available means. That is the only available but, means. But why are we faulting the employer? Because if the employer feels you're demanding for too much, a document we chance upon uh, says that, for instance, uh, a doctor is asking for from 8 gallons of petrol to 20 gallons. And probably government cannot afford that. And so is, is, it, not, is it not the case that, that government is saying, listen, we cannot meet your demand, maybe calm down something, and probably the doctors are being adamant? No, that should not be the case. I don't want to fault the doctors. Okay. They have the right to put up their proposals. Right. The employer, what is your offer? Okay. I, have, I want 20. Mm. I can give you three. Okay. Please come up a little bit, or because they are using the adversarial approach. That's why I'm using this word. Right. In the law, it shouldn't have been so. Okay. Now, if they cannot reach agreement, then they should march to the labor commission. They don't need to go on strike. Right. The strike they are on is illegal. It is immoral. Mm. It is not fair to the aunties who were in the hospital there waiting for it. Right. <laughs> I mean, it is just something that nobody. If I were to be them. They should, they should not allow anybody to talk about this matter again. I mm -hmm. feel ashamed talking about it. Right. Tomorrow morning, if they can't go to Labor Commission, they should stop it or they should decide to resign. Right. Okay. So let's look at how to resolve this issue because this thing has been there for a very long time. And, and I think that this kind of thing sets a bad precedent because others can follow suit. Mm. Uh, there are people who feel that um, if all the conditions mm -hmm. they are asking for mm. is, is granted, mm. other people in the public sector will also begin to go in that direction. How do we resolve this matter? Indeed, I must repeat, there is nothing wrong if they ask even for the sky. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with right. it. It's a proposal. Let them sit down and negotiate. If they cannot negotiate it to tell them we cannot negotiate it, let's go to Labor Commission. Okay. Or let's find another means of resolving it. But the manner in which they are going about it, in the first place, they should not have started the negotiation itself at all. At all. Because the people are holding gun. Come and let's negotiate. Okay. Then Haruna, poor him and his team <laughs> went and sat there and they are negotiating. Right. It's completely out, out of, of place. place. Okay. So the doctors should know that what they are doing is wrong. So what could government do in that instance? Go to Labor Commission. Okay. That is the institution. We don't need Obama to come and tell us. Okay. We created this thing as far back as 2003. Right. So today they should go to the National Labor Commission mm -hmm. and let the commission assist them. The commission can instantly help them to resolve... I went with my clients to the Labor Commission yesterday. Okay. I went there last week because we're not able to reach agreement. The okay. people didn't kill anybody. Right. We all went there and, and in a civilized way, have the matter talked about, and it was resolved. Right. But if you insist that you want the people, push all of them to a slaughterhouse. Okay. Because what they are doing, that is the meaning. Exactly. And it should not be so. I respect them. They, they, they were at my alumni program the last time, and I so I respect them a lot. But, but what do you think is, is the challenge for both of them uh, to match to the Labor Commission to resolve the matter? What I, has been I the challenge I don't know whether it is pride. I don't know whether it is the mountain of ego. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is wrong with both sides. Right. Either side can go there. Okay. So they should go there and stop what they are doing. Indeed, I repeat. If they think that they cannot go there and it is impossible to satis for them to be satisfied, then their suffering is their option. Okay. They should put pen to paper and resign. Then we all know that we don't even have doctors, doctors at, all. at all. But for mm. them to be there and will not do the job, and yet at the end of the month they can have the courage to, to collect their, their pay, it is immoral, it is illegal, 
and it is wrong. But Mr. Gwame, this is not it's the wrong. first time this is happening. Mm. Uh, we've seen some of these labor mm. agitations and, mm. and how uh, sometimes government has not handled it well. Mm. How do we prevent a recurrence? How, because how, it's having a toll on us. I want to call that, that fellow employer. Because government leads you into politics. Right. So I put politics aside. Okay. The employer should ensure that any time anyone go off course, hmm. you bring him to order. Okay. That order includes, if you cannot quickly do it yourself, go to the National Labor Commission. That is where the powerhouse is. Okay. Indeed, the only body, the only personality the Labor Commission cannot summon is the president. Okay. They can summon even vice president. Right. They can summon the chief justice. Okay. They can summon you. Right. They can summon anybody. Exactly. They have the power and the right to do so. So both sides should go there. Fortunately, the chairman of the National Labor Commission is not an appointee of government right. for anybody to be afraid. Okay. All the members, the only two people are representative of government. Okay. And even that, by, by the character and nature of the Labor Act, as soon as you are appointed and you get to the commission, mm. you are completely washed off by the people who send you there. Okay. You are independent and they have been doing their work like that. Okay. But this, does this not give the indication that both of them, especially mm. the employee, mm -hmm. uh, that they don't have uh, much confidence in the Labor Commission? They have no choice than to have confidence in the institution we have built as a nation. Right. Then they cannot even stay. They, then maybe they are going to Togo tomorrow. Okay. But if you stay in Ghana, <laughs> then we must respect the law of Ghana. And okay. the law says we should create an institution called National Labor Commission who should be the one that should assist. Even that we have mediators, we have arbitrators, we have negotiators who are all over the place whom they can consult. Exactly. Put them aside, go to the National Labor Commission and let the commission help you. Otherwise, then the option is for them to resign. To resign. Resign if you feel you have to or march to the Labor Commission for a resolution to this matter because Dr. Osing, uh, Mr. Osingame feels that they are marching all of us to the slaughterhouse. It's been today's big story. We'll be back with Joy News Interactive. Many thanks to you. You're welcome.